morning everyone we are going to go on a journey to the hill country today and you might recognize some of the hills indeed in the local area but i've been thinking about mary and elizabeth and i wondered what it was that made the relationship between Mary and Elizabeth, such a strong and special one. St. Luke records Mary's visit to Elizabeth like this. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. For why is this granted to me, that the mother of my God should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfilment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. And the Magnificat of Mary has been written so many different ways and so many different songs and we know it in church as tell out my soul the greatness of the lord the connection between mary and elizabeth is very deep and it is an example of true and genuine intergenerational friendship both mary and elizabeth were deeply connected to God, and that was the silver thread that linked them together. Both had been blessed by God, and both were chosen to bear children with particular tasks and roles. Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, entrusted with the task of being a mother to a man who had been prophesied about generations before, she found great grace with God because she accepted the possibility of miracles in her later life as a geriatric mum. Mary, of course, we know the commission she received and the warning words of Simeon, and a sword too shall pierce your heart for both of these women. The birth of these children were costly. John the Baptist didn't stay at home to look after his ageing parents, now did he? He went wandering off into the desert, asking people to return to God and to come back into a loving relationship with God. And he challenged the status quo of the time. And he called Herod out for being an adulterer and he lost his life. But back to that moment of joy when one baby recognised another baby in the other mother's womb and they left at the sound of the other mother's voice. And Mary's instant reaction is to bless and praise God as is Elizabeth's. The dialogue between these two incredible women was rejoicing and praise. And this would not have been possible if either of them had had envy, pride or anything else that can cause love to grow cold in their hearts. Mary stayed with Elizabeth until the birth of John. And going by the words they exchanged that first day, that must have been some visit. I wonder how Zechariah felt, excluded from the women's company somewhat. I wonder, I wonder if when we encounter an expectant mum, our hearts leap for the joy of that. And I wonder, do we stop to think about the very individual journey of motherhood? Perhaps the next time somebody says to us, I'm going to have a baby, we too might feel that leaping inside us as Mary 
and Elizabeth did. That kind of joy that new life brings. I wonder, was it a cold day that Mary set out? I wonder, did she go alone? I wonder, did she go in the company of other people? And I wonder if Elizabeth knew she was coming to stay with her. I suppose we'll never know. I wonder what it is today that your soul and my soul will tell out in the manner of Mary. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of the Lord, unnumbered blessings. Unnumbered blessings. Let us count one today as we journey on through Advent. I sing of a maiden that is makeless, King of all kings, to her son she chairs. He came all so still, there his mother was, As dew in April, that falleth on the grass. He came all so still, there his mother lay, as dew in April that falleth on the spray. He came all so still to his mother's bower, as dew in April that falleth on the flower. Mother and maiden was never none but she. Well may such a lady God's mother be.